It was unequivocal based on their testimony who they may favor more than the other as far as defendant or victim. This, the testimony we heard from three friends today, the first one, Samantha Cobb, seemed to be more uh, closer to Alex and talked favorably about him. The next witness talked favorably about both, good, good qualities about both of them. And the last one, Brianna, Brianna Larson, told this jury uh, several good qualities of the defendant and that the defendant called her that her wife and she said she was a good person, that she was generous, that she had all these qualities. And so it seemed like we had a mixed bag of who these friends related to the most or were maybe supporting now. And we're expecting to hear from her. This has been something her defense team hasn't been shy to say that when she takes the stand, will she testify? There's no question. They're saying she will tell her side of the story and what happened that day. And in opening statement, her defense team went into great detail about what happened. Well, who's that going to come from? The defendant, Ezra McCandless, who, you know, this was a relationship. I know we haven't talked about this yet, but some of the testimony elicited from these friends was about how Alex, even though he's really private with his relationship with Ezra, he just said that he was in a relationship with a male a trans male that like he called a boy. And that was something that harkens back to what she cut on her arm, admitted to cutting boy on her arm. And I think that's something that this prosecution is going to tie it all together in the end as possibly a reason that she was so angry that day. Evidence of that, in fact, the evidence is when she sent the text message, which Samantha, who you just showed, testified to, that Alex sent her test, a text message saying that uh, he received a message from Ezra saying, don't talk to me anymore, forget my name. And he honored that. And there, according to the prosecution's opening statement, he did not communicate with her from that moment on. In fact, she was the one who reached out to him on the day of the incident. What we've heard so far is that he was a laid back guy. We've been um, hearing the state elicit testimony of his peaceful nature and that's what they've been getting answers of. Even when he was confronted with the fit of rage from Jason Mingle like back in February 2000, 2018 when he called him outside the coffee shop and said, what have you been doing sleeping with my girlfriend? He was calm, according to these witnesses. He didn't yell back. He didn't seem very much affected by it. He was that kind of person, according to these witnesses. If that is most important for this jury to try to understand, to figure out what happened. Well, they've learned that it was a secret relationship. It was something that wasn't public. They were cordial and friends in the public setting, such as the coffee shop. But in private, they had a very intimate relationship. And she had a boyfriend, Jason Mingle, this entire time that she engaged with Alex Woodworth. So we're hearing from those three friends today. First, Samantha, who was more of a friend of Alex, and then a friend who was uh, both equally kind of their friend and the last witness was more of the defendant's friend and we're hearing a consistent picture that this was something they kept solely between themselves and was only told at, at times maybe those private details okay now what do we know about the nature of the relationship was this a love affair was this a sexual affair what what exactly uh, do we know at this point about the nature of this secret relationship It was a sexual affair. However, Ezra told her friend that Alex expressed to her that he loved her. She didn't quite return those same feelings. She loved Jason Mingle. And so we've learned that that was a little awkward at times and maybe added to some of the turmoil between everybody. But it was a secret relationship. It was a sexual relationship. And he loved her. She did not, not so much.